Hey guys, it's Legend Akage once again with another video. Today I'm going to be covering a load of information on swords in Destiny 2. I'll be going over each frame and what swords are available, what combos you should be using for DPS, what are the best perks to be using, and how they rank in DPS, total damage, and reserves. Something that will be used quite frequently in this video is combo notation. This is a simplified way to display what combos I am using with a sword, and as an example, I'm going to go over a lament combo of B, L3, H1, L3. This means block, light attack three times, heavy attack one time, play attack three times. These combos were determined using Lucent Blade and Swordsmaster Guard for maximum charge time, so bear that in mind. Starting off here is a summary of DPS, total damage, and reserves, and this is sorted by DPS. This is also factoring what I would consider the best rolls for each sword. Now going quickly in the notable perks available to swords, we got quite a few. Swordsmaster's Guard is the only guard worth going over because it increases your charge time. Relentless Strikes, landing 3 light attacks hits within a short time grants sword ammo. Tireless Blade, sword ammo granted for every other powered sword kill. Whirlwind Blade, rapid sword strikes increase this weapon's damage for a short duration. Guarding also ends the effect. And as you can see, it's a 30% boost at times 5. One for all, hitting three separate targets increases damage for a moderate duration, and you get a 35% damage bonus after hitting three separate targets within three seconds of each other, and the bonus lasts for 10 seconds. Corporal Weapon increases damage against bosses, vehicles, and guardians with their super active. Surrounded, this weapon gains bonus damage when three or more enemies are in close proximity. Swords have a reduced damage bonus compared to other weapons, and that is at 25%. Scattering Blade, if your heavy attack consumes the last of your ammo, it deals significantly increased damage, excludes aerial attacks, and it's a 67% damage bonus. Counterattack, blocking an attack immediately after guarding increases damage for a short duration. An attack must be guarded within a half second of starting block. It's a 50% damage increase for two seconds. Destruction Break, breaking an enemy's shield with this weapon makes them more vulnerable to kinetic damage for a brief period of time, and it's a 50% increase to kinetic damage for five and a half seconds. Flash Counter, melee blocked immediately after guarding disorients and weakens the attacker. And finally, Chain Reaction, each final blow with this weapon creates an elemental damage explosion. It is not affected by Dragonfly Spec. Now I'm going to be moving into each individual frame. Base DPS refers to no perks and using boss spec. I'm going to be using Jagged Edge on every legendary sword, and swords will be assumed to be masterwork. Starting off with adapted frames, the two combos I have here are H1-L6, and the other combo is L3. The H1-L6 combo has the better DPS but lower total damage, where L3 is better if you want to save ammo. It ranks 4th in sustained DPS out of all the frames. There are currently 6 adapted frames available, and that is By the Return, Honor's Edge, Bequest, Negative Space, Night Terror, and Steel Sybil Z14. Starting off with the By the Return, this is a drop from the Dreaming City activities such as Shattered Throne or Blind Well. And the roles here I want to highlight. Of course, I recommend Jagged Edge and Swordsmaster's Guard if you're going for high DPS. Enduring Blade is good if you're using it strictly for ad clear. In the left column, you have Relentless Strikes or Tireless Blade. Both are great options. And then in the right column, you have Disruption Break and Flash Counter. This sword isn't going to be doing high amounts of DPS, but is a great support sword to have. Now moving into Honor's Edge, it's a random world drop. Going over the perks, left column is going to be the same of Tireless Blade or Relentless Strikes. The right column, you have Flash Counter, Surrounded, or Counter Attack as great options. Now for Bequest, this is a drop from the Deepstone Crypt Raid. And going over the recommended roles, you have Tireless Blade and Relentless Strikes. I will mention Thresh in this slot because it could be helpful if you're just going for ad clear. And then you have Flash Counter and Surrounded in the right column. Next is Negative Space. This is another random world drop. And for recommended perks, of course, Tireless Blade and Relentless Strikes in the left column. And Counter Attack, Surrounded, Disruption Break, Flash Counter, and Whirlwind Blade in the right. This sword is loaded with great perks, and whenever you get a roll, it's 
probably going to be a good one. Next is Night Terror. You get this from the moon. And the roles I want to highlight here are Relentless Strikes and Tireless Blade in the left slot as usual. But we have Counter Attack and Flash Counter available here too, which is amazing. On the right column, we have One for All, Vorpal, and Surrounded. I'm personally looking for a Counter Attack Vorpal rule as this is gonna be insane if you can time your blocks correctly. And then finally, Steel Sybil. It's another random drop, and it doesn't have much in terms of perks, which makes it easier to get a good roll. You got your normal Relentless Strikes and Tireless Blade, and then Whirlwind Blade in the right. Now, moving on to the aggressive frames, you have the two combos of H1L6, and then the other combo of L2. H1L6 combo is your best combo for DPS, and L2 doesn't fall too far behind while having slightly more total damage. This frame ranks third in DPS of all the frames, and there's only currently one sword in this type, and that is Crown Splitter. Moving on to the rolls for Crown Splitter. In the left column, you want your Relentless Strikes, Tireless Blade, or Flash Counter. In the right hand, you can either go for Vorpal Weapon, Whirlwind Blade, Surrounded, or Counter Attack, depending on your blaze style. Now moving on to the caster frames, we have two combos here of H1L4 and L3. As you can see, both combos are practically the same in DPS, but the total damage immensely falls off when you weave in heavy attacks. You only want a heavy attack if you need the range from it. They currently rank 6th in DPS and there are two caster frames in the game. Temptation's Hook and Sola Scar. Starting off with Temptation's Hook, this is a random world drop. And the rolls you want to look for are Tireless Blade or Relentless Strikes, Surrounded, Orpal, Flash Counter, or War One Blade in the right column. Next is Sola Scar, and this is from Trials. The perks here I would be looking for is Tireless Blade or Relentless Strikes with Vorpal Weapon, Chain Reaction, or Counter Attack. Personally, I would go for Tireless Blade and Chain Reaction on the sword, as I only use this for ad clear. Now moving on to the Lightweight, the combos here you want to be using is H1L6 or L2. DPS here isn't that different, and same thing with total damage. The H1L6 does pull ahead slightly. They currently rank second in DPS, and there is only one in the game, Quick Fang. Now for Quick Fang, this is Hunter exclusive, and it's a random world drop. It always rolls with Swordsmaster's Guard, which is great. And the perks you want to look for here are Tireless Blade or Relentless Strikes. Thresh can be another good option if you're using this to clear adds. And then either Flash Counter or One for All in the right hand column. Now moving on to the final legendary sword frame type, and that is Vortex. Two combos here are H1L6 and L3. The H1L6 combo is your DPS monster, whereas L3 helps conserve your total damage a bit more. They currently rank first in DPS with the H1L6 combo, and there are currently two in the game, Fallen Guillotine and Eternity's Edge. Starting with Fallen Guillotine, this is a random world drop, and the perks you want to look for are Fireless Blade or Relentless Strikes, Counter Attack, Rounded, or Whirlwind Blade. Next is Eternity's Edge, and this is a random world drop that is Warlock exclusive. The perks here you want to look for are Tireless Blade, Relentless Strikes, or Thresh, and Counter Attack, Flash Counter, or Surrounded. Now moving into the exotics, we have Black Talon. The two combos here are H2L5 and L3. The H2L5 combo is what you want to be using for DPS. And you can use L3 to help conserve total damage, but if you're just going to L3 with the sword, you can get better options. The Catalyst is also broken with the sword as of this moment, because guarding takes away the energy needed for the heavy attacks. Black Talon currently ranks 7th in DPS out of all the frames, and is a random drop exotic. Next up is Lament, and the combos here are B, L3, H1, L3, and L3. This sword also gives you anti-barrier rounds and healing whenever you damage a combatant. It currently ranks 5th in DPS, but does not require a god roll to do so. Then we have World Line 0. The combos here are H1, L6, and L3. Both of them are extremely underwhelming. This sword is completely outclassed by every other sword in the game, and I really hope Bungie does a rework at some point. Ward Line Zero currently ranks last in damage, and is a random drop exotic. 
Now for mod selection for swords, starting off with boss spec, major spec, minor spec, and taken spec. All of these I'm just lumping together as they are just a base increase to your damage. These are the superior mods as the regular specs give you 7.7% damage bonus, but taken spec actually gives you a 10% damage bonus. Backup mag raises your total ammo but generally is a DPS and total damage loss compared to boss spec. And surrounded spec is generally only used if you have surrounded. It increases the damage bonus to 35% and it lingers a bit when you're no longer surrounded. Now for some armor mods that benefit from swords. Quick charge greatly increases the ready speed for swords. Striking light, while charged with light, defeating combatants with a sword spawns one orb of power for your allies and consumes one stack of charge with light. I wouldn't say this is a huge deal either because you can just use a masterwork legendary sword. And finally, Lucent Blade, while charged with light, dealing damage with a sword gives you bonus sword damage for 5 seconds, consuming one stack of charge with light and greatly increases the charge rate for your equipped swords. This is a must have for sword DPS. It is a 35% damage bonus which is on par with weapons of light and the increased charge rate is huge. It's what allows us to do those H1 L6 combos otherwise it's more like H1 L8 and that would drop the DPS. And now here's just some other random sword tips. Some might be commonly known, others may not be. Sword swinging in the air can quickly change your momentum in a different direction. You can use this to save yourself if you get blasted off a ledge or increase the length of your jumps. Blocking reduces physics damage. If you want to free fall and increase your chance of living, just block with a sword. Hunters can actually world line skate with any sword with momentum varying from sword to sword. Sword line zero of course giving the biggest bonus. Titans can use lion ramparts with the swords to cross extremely large gaps. Sword energy does not generate when it's stowed compared to when it's out. This was definitely longer and more in depth than my usual build guides. I hope you guys learned something here and comment down below if you found this helpful or if you have any more tips for swords. Also let me know if you like the format of this video. I want to cover all weapon types eventually and as I make these I am making a spreadsheet of DPS numbers for easy comparison later. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys next time.